in the same video. So here we're asked to solve negative three times the quantity negative seven x plus three plus eight x equals five x minus four times the quantity one minus six x. It seems like a mouthful and it seems long and tedious, but it really isn't. As long as we follow the same six steps, we should be able to solve this problem without any issue. So again, we're solving for x and we're trying to classify the equation at the end. So as before, step one is to clear the parentheses and there's two sets, one on the left, one on the right. So first we need to distribute the negative three into both of these terms. And we also need to distribute the negative four into both of those terms. So negative three times negative seven x would give us 21 x. Negative three times positive three would give us a negative nine. The eight x comes along, the five x comes along, and then negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times negative six x would be positive 24 x. So at this stage, this is the equation that we have. Now, step two is always clear the fractions if there are any, but in this case, we don't have any fractions, so we can skip ahead to step three, which is isolate stuff. Get all the x's on one side, get all the non x's onto the other side. So here I chose to move the x's to the left and the non x's to the right. There's no requirement that you have to do the same. You can move the x terms to the right and the non x terms to the left. The idea is you just have to separate them on either side of the equation. So because the five x is positive, it's being added. When I move it over to the left hand side, I have to subtract it. So that becomes a negative five x. Similarly, the 24 x is being added here. So when I move it over to the other side, I have to subtract it also. Now the negative four is already on the right hand side. The only thing I need to do is take this negative nine and move it to the right. And when I do, it becomes a positive nine. Again, remember that we're using inverse operations. We're doing the opposite operation to the term when we move it to the other side. At this stage, we can simply combine like terms because we have all the x terms together and all the non x terms together. On the left hand side, again, to avoid mistakes, we do two at a time. So 21 x plus eight x is going to give us 29 x minus the five x minus the 24 x. And on the right hand side, negative four plus nine is going to give us a five. We keep combining like terms. 29 x minus five x gives us 24 x that minus another 24 x equals the five. Now here, very, 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 very important uh, thing to avoid a very important mistake to avoid 24 x minus 24 x is just zero. If you subtract something from itself, you're always going to get zero as an answer. A very common mistake that students will make here is say, well, there's got to be an x left over. I have never had equations where I didn't have an x left over. That's not true. 24 x minus 24 x is not equal to x. It is just zero. If you subtract something from itself, you always get zero as the answer. So 24 x minus 24 x is just going to be zero. They're going to cancel each other out. And you're going to be left with zero equals five. Now I'm going to bring us back to this just for a moment. There were three ways solving an equation could end, or there were three possible outcomes. The first was a conditional when you have a variable equaling a number. That was the first example we saw in this video. Another scenario is where you have no variables left over and there are two possible outcomes there. It could either be a true statement where it's two equals two or seven equals seven, or it could be some nonsensical statement or a false statement where you have zero equals nine or eight equals 14. So coming back here, we notice that there are no variables left over. And zero equals five is a false statement. Zero does not equal five. Therefore, we say that this equation is an inconsistency. There is nothing to check here. There are no potential solutions because there's no variable left over. So we don't even have to bother with step six. There's nothing, there's no value of X to even try.